Good afternoon, Zachariah Jackson, Bassa News. I'm happy to be in Elizabeth, but for a special occasion, an occasion that marks freedom uh, 1865, is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, the freedom is uh, Juneteenth. And I'm talking to Crystal. Crystal, what's your last name? Orr. Crystal Orr? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's different. <laughs> I'm sure people told you that. Okay, so you guys are having actually a Juneteenth celebration? Yes. Okay, and um, what inspired the Juneteenth uh, celebration? So, um, we have had a Juneteenth celebration in Elizabeth for easily the past 15 years, I Is would right? say. Yes. So, um, one of our long time black business owners in the city, Kid Nesbitt Good, she owns Nesbitt Funeral Homes. Okay, she yes, led I was there one time. Our Juneteenth celebrations for okay. many years. We've had a rodeo. Wow. Um, last year we were in Barnacle Park, like okay. a family day. Right. Um, so we've always had different types of events in celebration of Juneteenth. Okay. And so we, a few years ago, they combined the Juneteenth celebration with the African American Heritage Parade. Okay. So my mom, Georgia Jones Orr, um, who was a founder of this organization, they call it ACT, and um, also, yes, okay. and then Miss Charlotte Brown, who was the founder of the United Youth of New Jersey Drill Team, okay. they came together in 2000 to start the first African American Heritage let me, Parade. Let me, let me check. You said Charlotte Brown. Yes. Did they do the drill team type yes, thing? Yes, yes. You know, I interviewed her and her husband. Uh, yes, Mr. Kenny. Yeah, about, I don't know, must have been 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. But I lost them when I came to Elizabeth, when I started working, doing a lot of stuff over here in Elizabeth, coming to Salon Michigan, a lot of this stuff. I, I never, I had seen them. I hadn't seen him in since like 2008, 2000. I've seen some interviews. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I was actually on the drill team as a kid. And you know, you um, familiar, did you ever come to Harvest Radio with them? No. Okay. No, by that point in 2008, I was leaving to go to college. Okay. So I wasn't on the drill team then. But when I was a kid, I was. And yeah. so Miss Charlotte and my mom and their groups. They started the first parade in Elizabeth over 20 okay. years ago. So now everything is combined. The African American Heritage Parade, the okay. Juneteenth Celebration, and that's what we're doing this year on Sunday, June 18th. Wow, okay. And do you guys have a monument for June, Juneteenth? Yes, so what's unique about this year is that um, after we have this parade and celebration of us and our culture, we're going to unveil the 313 Ancestors Speak Monument. Now when you say 313, uh, just for the audience and everything, and even for myself, uh, what exactly do that mean? Yeah, so um, I should say 313 plus now, because at the old church, or oh, I said old cemetery in Elizabeth, New Jersey on Broad Street that's connected to what is now called the Shalom Hope First Presbyterian Church, okay. um, which has a long, long history in New Jersey and in Elizabeth in general. They found in the records that there were over 300 black people who are buried in that cemetery. Okay. That cemetery is one of the oldest cemeteries in New Jersey. I believe the oldest grave in New Jersey is in that cemetery from 1647. Wow. So they found actual written records of black people who were buried there. Now, I would say. Look, now I'm, I'm going to just ask just for the audience. I'm sure I know. Are were they slaves? Yes. So majority, I would say, are, were slaves. And there were some who were free as well. There are some who were actually buried with their masters that's sure. there too. So it's a combination of, um, of our ancestors that are over there. Oh, okay. And so this monument is in honor of those ancestors and you know, like a burial ground. And sure. so um, some names we have full first and last name. Some okay. are just marked as unknown, but we know that they are there. Yeah. So this monument is to forever 
honor them if anyone comes the graveyard is already a historical site in sure. new jersey so now the monument will be one as well and it's not just going to stop with the monument we're mm -hmm. going to go beyond that and it's going to also be a mu museum within snyder academy which is the building that's in front and so within that museum we will have our history our heritage in the city and the county and talk about who we are and, and and why that's important. Um, so this is a special Juneteenth celebration that we're going to have. Um, like I said, not only just the parade and the entertainment, um, but with the unveiling of the monuments. And then it's going to be one o'clock on Juneteenth. Was that, was that just the parade? So the parade will start at one o'clock on Sunday, June eighteenth. We are going to start at the Elizabeth Waterfront, which we call our downtown area. We're going to come up Elizabeth Avenue, mm -hmm. and then we're going to turn on Broad Street and end at the graveyard site. Okay. So after the parade is over and the bands and everyone performs, we're going to go straight into the ceremony um, to unveil the monuments. Also, around the monument, people were able to purchase bricks with their, in honor of their families, mm -hmm. their, um, you know, churches or organizations. Sure. So, for instance, I'm the president and CEO of the Urban League of Union County, so mm -hmm. the Urban League of Union County will have a brick as well, um, you know, to be a part of the legacy well, and the history. Let me ask you, how much do a brick cost? Um, the brick for uh, eight by eight was a hundred dollars, and for twelve by twelve was three hundred. So on this eight by eight, which is a hundred dollars, what can you put on it? You can put names. You can you can fit. I'm, I'm not sure off my off the top of my head how many lines can go there. Um, maybe about six or so lines can go in that mm -hmm. one. It's a pretty big size brick though, and then the twelve by twelve. You can even put logos. You can put pictures. Sure. Sure. So you'll see that on the bricks as well. And then the monument itself was also designed by um, uh, African American as well, Sterling Brown, who is pretty well known for his sculptures and his designs in, um, in New Jersey. So it is really going to be a beautiful um, celebration sure. in honor of our people. We're going to talk about that. Sure. We have invited some distinguished guests to come as well. Okay. And so we're just really excited to um, really celebrate our freedom, the people who fought for us to even get to this point today. Sure. And it's since it is a free day, everything is free. So we will have free food, we will have free entertainment, sure. we will provide resources to people as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a completely free celebration for everyone in the state of New Jersey or and beyond to come to. Well, uh, okay, today is the 18th actually. Yes, yeah, so the okay, day- Okay, so one month. Yes. Oh, that's right. It yeah. is the 18th. So yeah, we're exactly like one, month. one month away from this celebration. And I'm really excited to now be in a position um, coming from a young girl who participated in the parades yeah. and came to the Juneteenth celebration to now be able to lead this celebration and bring multiple groups together and people from around the city and the county and show that we can work together sure, that we sure. all can be collaborative and that's what we're doing right now okay so what is the all right if what's the cutoff date for the bricks so actually today was the cutoff date for the bricks in order for them to be there by the time of the unveiling mm -hmm. um there may be an opportunity after that for people to purchase a few more bricks to lay down but majority of them will be there in a month okay well can someone purchase a brick like like in the next hour and it be ready for the juneteenth or is that cut off I believe five o'clock was the cutoff as I'm looking, yes. But we will, yeah, there there may still be some opportunities once they do the initial laying of the bricks and see, you know, what other spaces are left for sure, people sure, to purchase. Sure. I'm I, sure. I would like to buy a brick. I'll tell you why. Because my family, this is our 100 year, 100 years uh, in New Jersey. Oh, wow. We came from Dawson, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And we uh, first came to Elizabeth. Jersey. Really? Yes, we came in 1923, 
Okay. Two uncles, and then the rest of the family joined them the next year. And uh, my grandfather actually died in Elizabeth in 1925 from pneumonia because he he had a, uh, he came from Georgia mm -hmm. and he had a hat that he was saving. You know, he didn't want to wear the hat or whatever. And my grandmother often said that the hat outlived him because he caught pneumonia and died here. Oh, wow. So I would definitely like to buy a brick in their honor. Okay. this is a centennial for us. Yes. Yes. And we, after, after um, my grandfather died, and I, I think my, I had an uncle that died in a little bit of a terrible accident in 25. Uh, 26, I believe my grandmother moved everybody to Prince Street in Newark, and we've been in that area ever since. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and that was one of the things too. This project, the 313 Plus Ancestors Speak project, is led by Reverend Dr. Wanda Lundy, who's the pastor now of the church. And she wanted to make sure we captured the families that came. Through Elizabeth, yes, came yes, to Elizabeth yes, in yes, history. Yes, so I definitely Elizabeth. can get that information yeah, yeah, to you because yeah, it's important yeah, for us yeah. to know. And if I can get one of those bricks, I'm I'm, I'm eager to buy it. I would okay. like to have my grandmother and grandfather name on there, just an inscription that they come from Dawson, Georgia. Oh wow! 1923. Yes, yes, yes definitely. Because, so yeah. that would be amazing because yeah. that's what you know. This is this history that we hope will live forever. Sure, just like sure. this, these graves have been here for over 300 years. Yes. So you yeah. know, yeah. this is things. Even if you don't know who they are, you'll read it and you'll yeah. look at it and you'll see these. It's names. the foundation. It's, it's exactly for us that we that we have to stand up for. It. Yes. Because with all the schools today that's trying to yes. cut out the yes. history and things of that nature. And I had a conversation the other day about it. I said, well, you know, at first, when they said they want to get rid of black American history in school, I have to be honest with you, I was not upset behind it. i tell you why. Because uh, most of the people that I meet, you know, uh, in my age group, that's when they went to school and things of that nature, that it's almost as though uh, black history to them is very strange. And they done real good in, in school. They don't produce the uh, James Carries and stuff of that nature. They don't produce the Salam Israels, you know. And it's like, so I said, well, you know, I, I don't know. I said, because when I talk to somebody, you know, my peers or whatever, it's like they're yeah, strange to this the black history, as if they're someone else. But then I thought about it the other day, and Spirit spoke to me and said, the reason why they want to get rid of the black history is not because of us, because we are not turning out a great number of revolutionaries from uh, our schools. We're not turning out like we should, you know. Uh, um, they go through the black history, but we're not turning out those great leaders and things of that nature. I said, so I, I'm a Spirit told me that the reason why they want to get rid of it is because the other groups of people that's migrating and immigrating in here that could, uh, if you quote unquote, hold hands with us to get their lift off, they don't even want them to know any work that we've done. Then I start getting furious. I said, oh, okay. Yet now I see what it is, you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, I think that this is a good thing that you guys are doing to keep the history alive. Yes, and that's what's really important is the education yes. around it as well. So, as I mentioned, that even on that day, we're still going to educate people. Sure, They're sure. going to learn, and we hope that it encourages them to have pride sure. in who they are in their history. But we're going to expand from that. We'll have the museum. We'll have more events and even now in running the Urban League it is important for me to make sure that we have educational events that um, for Black History Month we had like four different programs and to really share our history so our kids can know who they come from, sure. what you know, where they come from and understand the journey and, and, and what it took to get here. I understood that as a kid thanks to my parents, mm -hmm. thanks to um, the school I the went to did teach me black history at St. Philip's Academy in Newark. I, I learned my heritage. That's a private school, isn't it? Yes, it was a private school and I was charter. And so I learned in school. I learned at home. I learned through the Urban sure. League coming to events. I learned through my city. 
And so the people in the city, like being on the drill team and sure. things of that nature, and our next generation of kids need to know that as sure. well. All of the kids, not even just our black kids, but everyone needs to know our history too. Because everyone needs to know that we cont contributed a great deal to yes. the growth of this nation. Yes. And that right there is important. And that's the reason, that's the angle that my frustration comes from with them trying to X out black history because what you're trying to say is that this way it was just a dominating Anglo-Saxon uh, drive all the way up to the top and that our tutelage or our surgery and it didn't really mean anything. You can't cut us out of this. And there's important books too that people need to read and know. Um, you know, I, I saw that on one of the band lists because we did have a press conference with National Urban League that it was a book about Ruby Bridges. And I remember in second grade, Ruby Bridges came to St. Phillips and we met her. And then they had a movie about her and we learned about just, you know, what it took for a six-year-old to integrate schools back sure, then. Sure, sure. Okay. And just how people treated them. But it's like, how can a book about Ruby Bridges offend anyone? <laughs> you know, about a... a, a a little girl trying to go to school so those are the things that we still need to teach our kids we still need to make sure they're reading their books on their own yes, yes. um there's some of these books that are a part of institution of, of american literature That's right. That's right. that you know is a requirement to graduate from high school you know you have to read some of these books so we have to make sure though that we're teaching them on our own and we are at Juneteenth, we're going to have a kids' corner. Okay. We are going to have arts and crafts with them. We're going to give away books and good, different things good, to them good, as good, well. Good. So, like I said, this maybe is, we can do uh, some pages of read-offs. You know, so the kids can read a page or something. You know? Oh, so nice, it's, you know? yeah. so <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of opportunity. So again, this is not only just entertainment. Sure fun, free food, but we will have arts and crafts, we'll have things for the kids to do, it will be a full event for all age groups. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, well, I'm happy to cover it, and how would they get in contact? Well, before we go to contact, I, I want you to explain what exactly is the Urban League? Yes, so I love doing this. Uh, I'm glad that you yes, asked because yes, yes. Um, I, I talk to people, students at schools yes. and when I'm asked to come and that's the first question I ask them. I said, do you know what the Urban League is? And they're like, no. I'm like, you don't know? So um, the National Urban League was founded in 1910, so over 100 years ago in New York City. And the purpose of the Urban League movement was to help those that were migrating from the south during the great migration sure, sure. when the black people were coming up to the north right. to find jobs better education mm -hmm. opportunities but yet when they arrived here they realized that they didn't have any direction sure. so urban league was founded in helping them to really navigate in that in those social services to make sure we had um equal we, that we had um, equality in education, mm -hmm. that we had job opportunities, sure. that we had housing, you know, and now we have health, yes. economic empowerment. And so the things we were fighting for for over 100 years ago, we're still fighting for those sure. today. And it started just in New York and then they, they grew and they built what we call affiliates across the country. So right now there's 92 different urban leagues across the country in almost every state and every major city. Now is there a president of the urban league? Yes. National president? Our national urban league president is Mark Maria. Mark Maria. Okay. Yes. And he's been um, the president for, I believe this year, celebrates 20 years. He's the former mayor of New Orleans. Okay. And he's been leading our urban league. And uh, we have grown so much now that different urban leagues have entrepreneurship centers sure. now to help people. Some urban leagues actually have built housing sure. to help people. Okay. Um, our particular urban league, the Urban League of Union County, we are one of five urban leagues that are currently in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We were founded in 1944, so next year we celebrate 80 years of oh, serving our community. Yes. And yes. our urban league, we, have, we focus on housing. So mm -hmm. we have a housing department that helps with 
um, emergency rental assistance, sure. mortgage, utilities, sometimes security deposit, food. We, we also have a first time home buyers program. Wow, that's wonderful. So we help people to buy homes and uh, prepare them in the process, I should say. And we actually did our annual meeting a few days days ago mm -hmm. and sure. we gave out over six hundred and seventy thousand dollars in assistance wow. just in 2022 alone wow. including eviction prevention oh, helping wonderful. people who were who had actual eviction notices and court cases to stop the process from going forward so they could stay in their homes and so the work that we're doing is really important we also have a reentry program so okay. we help people who were formerly incarcerated okay. and That's whether wonderful. they you know, came out of prison yesterday, or they've been out for five or six years, and they just need the opportunity. Sure, they need sure, a second sure, chance. Sure. So we help them to find jobs. Mm -hmm. We even have some fund that can help some people on parole pay for housing. Wow. We um, we give out tons of bus passes. We buy food gift cards for people. Okay, okay. We even have in our second floor office. We have a, a, a business clothes closet now where we can um, help people make sure they have clothes for work and, and I interviews. started to bring a suit here <laughs> and a brand new shirt. I started to bring it here. And I said, well, I don't know who was Crystal give it to. I didn't. Oh, uh, we have. Set up like no, this. yep, we have so a closet. So I can bring it here? Yes, now? Okay, yes, okay. we have a closet. Okay. Um, and. Um, we, we help sure, people in yeah. all different areas, sure. and we like to just be considered a resource. So even sure. if we can't help, I always try to see who can I guide you to, sure. what other agencies or um, organizations sure. may be able to help people in need. Right. And we're growing. We're constantly I growing see, here. I see, I'm starting to see the signs all over. Uh, well, let me ask you, are you, are you uh, friends with the NAACP or are you rivals? Oh, no, we're friends, Close you know. Friends. We are, yeah, we we, we do not consider ourselves rivals okay. at all. Okay. We all work together, okay. um, specifically with the NAACP and Elizabeth. Sure. I've been working with them more. <laughs> um, we did a, a, the Black History Month program together. Okay. In February, we're going to, we're looking at doing other events. If we okay. talk, I talk with the president um, as well. And I need to continue to build relationships with Because you guys other. are basically doing the same kind of work, basically. It's in general of helping black people sure. but it's different types of work right. so as the urban league we are we actually have a staff okay. so i have a staff here we help people day to day we sure. have an office we have operations sure. Sure. and so we build out those day-to-day -day programs but we also do um the community work as well okay. we have the advocacy part of it where NAACP in general they do a lot of the advocacy work um in their communities they're mainly volunteer organizations okay. and so that's really where the, we're different in okay. that sense and the work that we do but in all together we're here to help our people oh, cool. and so that's the common that's goal cool. and we're going to work together so, to reach that common goal and you guys have a over 100 year history yes okay. and, and, and doing that and you know we look to continue to do it for 100 more years yes, and evolve yes, 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 along the way that's us keep it going that uh, those that you help uh, pray that they don't forget the bridge that carry the cross and yeah, and give back. Okay, so how would someone meet, uh, reach you for the Juneteenth celebration? Yeah, so first um, we would I'll tell everyone to go to our web go to the website. So if you go to three one three ancestors with an S speak project dot org um, as soon as you go on the website you'll see the Juneteenth information it'll let you know um, all the details that I announced earlier in terms of where we're starting um, the program for the day also we are on social media so as social media we are calling we are the Juneteenth Collective 1865 that represents all the organizations that are planning this celebration that's a part of it we want it to be one unified voice sure. so if you go on social media facebook and instagram facebook juneteenth collective 1865 instagram juneteenth cole col 1865 you'll find us there and then if you want more information you want to talk to someone you can always call our urban league office 
at 908-351-7200 and we can provide you with information leading up to that day. Okay. All right. You heard it right here from the president, is that correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> of the Union uh, Elizabeth branch of the Urban League. Yes. In County. All right. Is that telephone number people can reach you at? Yes, the, the office number, 908-351-7200. Okay. Again, this is Zachariah Jackson, Massa News. Good night.